Hey Church, 1 Timothy 6 coming up here. We're going through the whole book of 1 Timothy. It's been my honor and privilege to do these with you, to be able to go through the whole book of 1 Timothy with you about leadership, about church, about elders, about so much that we've been learning about. Let's pray. Holy Ghost, we thank you. Teach us your word today. Thank you. We're open for it. In Jesus' name, we want to listen to your voice. Amen. So as we go today, let's go right from verse 1. And it just continues on, you know, chapter five was more about leadership, about widows, about the elderly, about respect and honor, what that looks like. Children take care of your parents. That's a godly thing to do that blesses the Lord. And it's talking about things that please God. But we continue on with that thought about things that please God as Paul continues to talk and talking about slaves. So he starts up about all slaves should show full respect to their masters. So they will not bring shame on the name of the God for the teaching. So please see this. It then talks about masters. Uh, treating their slaves the right way. So you're like, does God condone slavery? No, 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 no. Once again, this is a cultural thing, specifically historically and culturally, in the time that Paul was speaking to with the church that Timothy was running. Paul was giving Timothy some direct instruction to tell the people that were in his church, and they still had slaves. Some of them still had that. And so he's talking about how to treat them right. Okay. And he's saying, you want to encourage them to obey the Lord, obey leadership and authority in your life. And that's what we can take from it. We're not going to have slaves. But we know that we need to obey the authority that's on our life. That's really the main message there. And so um, he then continues to talk in verse 4 we're going to go to now. Anyone who teaches something different than the gospel that we've taught is a person who lacks understanding. Such a person has an unhealthy desire to quibble over the meaning of words. Man, do we know anybody like that who just loves to debate? Just loves to just quibble is the word that New, New Living Translation, but just squabble, just... Just stuff that doesn't matter, man. Let's just argue about anything. Wow. Such a person has an unhealthy desire to argue. This stirs up arguments ending in jealousy, division, slander, and evil suspicion. These people always cause trouble. Their minds are corrupt and they have turned their backs on the truth. To show them a show of godliness is just a way to become wealthy. While to them, a show of godliness is just a way to become wealthy. So they don't think you're real. These people never think you're real. Oh, you're just putting on an act. That's not how you really are. If they really know what you are like, you know any people like that? If they really know how you act, wait a minute. You know, I'm changing. God is blessing my life. I am acting godly. Like these are people that you do not want to associate with in your inner circle. People who just want to argue. People who just want to constantly have begin contention. But basically, he's telling Timothy, listen, warn people. You don't want to be involved with these people. They'll steal your joy. They'll steal your peace. Sometimes you have to disconnect from people. Still love them, but love them from a distance. Sometimes you have to take away the strife and the pressure. Listen to this. Sometimes... Until you throw Jonah off the boat, the storm will not stop. Until you throw Jonah off the boat, the storm won't stop. You see, there's judgment that's on some certain people. Judgment. There's a judgment that's on them. If they repent, of course, God could have mercy. But there's a judgment on some people as a consequence of their actions and the things they've done. And if you associate with them or involve yourself, you come under the same judgment if you're not careful. You have to be careful about your associations, the people you're rubbing shoulders with, people you're spending the most time with. Listen, if God has you on a mission and he's told you to minister to this person 100%, you're under the protection of the Lord because there is no fear in love. <clears throat> there is no fear when God's love is running through you and he's told you what to do with somebody. But there are certain people that you don't want to associate with if God has not told you to. Amen? All right. Verse 6, godliness, true godliness with contentment itself is great wealth. I love that. After all, we brought nothing with us when we came into the world, and we can't take anything away when we leave. That's I want to talk about this. we got to talk about this, guys. Let's read that one more time. This is so powerful, and we're going to end here about this. After all, we brought nothing with us when we came into this world. You came in naked and screaming. <laughs> you came in, the doctor picked you up, slapped you around, and you started breathing. You came in with nothing but your body. And he says, and we can't take anything with us when we leave. Naked you came in, then God says, you're going to go up to heaven the same way. He's saying, listen, he's saying, you're going to die, you're going to be buried, but when you get to heaven, you can't take your Lamborghini. You're not going to be able to take your truck. 
Sad as it is, trust me, I know it's sad. You're not going to be able to take uh, your houses. You're not going to be able to take your money. It doesn't work in heaven. Money is not used in heaven. You know, God told me something very, very important. He told me, he said, Gavin, he said, use and give away all the money you can because on earth is your only chance where it's useful. He said, you only have one chance with money, Gavin. That's what he said. He said, this is what he showed me. He showed me, you want to give away and use to bless as many people as possible here on earth with money. Because money won't matter up here, he told me. He said, money's not going to matter up here. The only place where money has use is on earth. So give away as much as you can so that you can build as many treasures that are up here that are actually going to count. Wow. Money doesn't count in heaven, but you can use it down here on earth in order to get something that counts up in heaven. Wow. You go to heaven, you don't go with the truck. You don't go with your car. You don't go with your house. You don't go with nothing. The only thing you take to heaven is your own spirit, yourself. Listen. And whether or not you did God's will in this life, and let me guarantee you this, if you fulfilled God's will when you were on earth that he had for you while you were here on this earth, you're going to go up with souls that will be credited to your account. Souls, human souls, lives that were changed and impacted for Jesus because you were here. That's all you get when you go to heaven. He's going to either say, well done or not, because you fulfilled his purposes, his will. Matthew 7 says it like this. Jesus is talking and he says, not everybody who cries to me, Lord, Lord, will get into heaven. But he says, only those, Matthew 7, 21, only those who do the will of my father will enter the kingdom. So you got to understand this is really, really important. There are people who are in church who do, did say a prayer. They do come to church. But if they're not doing the will of God, if they have not sought the will of God, if they have not handed over their life as a true disciple to the Lord, they would have said the prayer, God does know their name, but they will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. He, re he reaffirms this by verse 22 and verse 23. He says, many will come and say, we cast out, he said, many will come and say, we prophesied in your name. Now, let me just say real quick, that doesn't mean they're necessarily saved. So many will say the prophesy in their name. A lot can prophesy in the name of Jesus. Who knows what happens from that? But the second one proves that they have to be saved. Why? Because it says they will come and cast out demons. You cannot cast out devils unless you're saved and know Jesus. How do I know this? Because remember, he says, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Verse 23, for I never knew you. The word never knew doesn't mean he never actually knew them. Like he didn't know their name. The word knew is the same word knew that's in Genesis. When Adam knew Eve intimately and they conceived Cain and conceived Abel. It's an intimacy term. It means that, yeah, you could be known by God. You said the prayer, but you never were intimate with him. You never grew in an intimate relationship with God to find out your purpose. Remember, an intimacy is where you conceive. I'm going to say it again. Intimacy is where you conceive. Intimacy with you and God is where you conceive the purpose to be birthed in your life. So he's saying there are people that did know me. They had gifts. They cast out devils. Let me prove to you why that means they had to be saved. And then it says that I'll say, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. You never even knew me. You didn't intimately get to know me and my purpose. Therefore, you weren't able to do the will of my father, verse 21. And therefore, you never knew me. You're not going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Why does it mean if they cast out devils that they had to be saved? I'll say this and then we're going to end. This is very interesting. Do you remember when Jesus was casting out devils? This is the book of Matthew as well. I think it's eight or nine. I'll get exact reference a little bit later. Um, and, and, but just look, Matthew. And it says that he's casting out demons. He casts them out. And then the Pharisees come and say, he cast out devils by the prince of devils. And what has Jesus said? A kingdom divided against itself will not stand. How can I by Satan cast out Satan? He says, you can't do it. Let me give you another example. Okay. How can I by Satan cast out someone? A kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. All right, it cannot stand. So Jesus is saying there are people who are in the faith 
and they have known me to a certain degree. That gave them gifts. He said he gave gifts to everyone, whether you're saved or not. But he said, they will not have gotten intimately acquainted with me and know me to the point of knowing their purpose and knowing the will of God. They just depended upon their gift. They just depended upon their gift. But there are people who were given a gift at a certain time of their life where they were truly seeking God. They were fasting. They were praying. They were going for the Lord. God revealed that gift into them. But they walked away from their first love. They walked away. And therefore, they no longer had acquaintance with the Lord, so they could not fulfill His will. Remember, Matthew 7, 21, only those who fulfill the will of my Father can be saved. Do you remember in the book of Acts, the seven sons of Sceva? It said they came and said, in the name of the one that Paul serves, come out. And another one said, in the name of Jesus, come out. What does the demon say to them? Jesus I know. Paul I know. But who are you? You can't cast out devils unless you know Jesus. Unless you are saved. This is so powerful, guys. Um, realize the Lord is with you. We're going to be the ones who stand with God at the throne, and he's pleased with us. He's going to be saying, well done, good and faithful servant. I believe that about every single one of y'all. God is here with you guys. Remember, let's do things that please the Lord. First Timothy is all about how to do things that truly please God. It's a very practical book. I pray you got something from it. Enjoy the rest of your week. We love you. God bless. Mm -hmm.